Hi, I'm Mike Gilkey. And I'm Josh Bogart. And this is our power base. Right here is our full wiring circuit. Um, here's our power block, the PLC we're using. Here's our ground block and the four relays we use for reversing the motor. Now to better understand the wiring we just showed you on the clay pigeon thrower, we'll show you the circuit right here. Um, as you can see, right here we have the 12 volt power source, ground, and here's the PLC we're using which is actually a molar 419. Um, right here I'm going to quick go through the reversing circuit to kind of help better understand it for you. Um, as we send signal to output 1, it'll come through here giving power to this side of the motor and it'll come out and go through the other relay grounding it. And now if we fire this one and the solenoid which you see right here that's connected to these two switches it actually throws the switch over so now when you send now that it's sending power through here it'll actually be coming through this way sending over here reversing the motor since this contact right here will be on this side, it'll then move this to ground. And it's the exact same for this side. As you can see, we have a reversing circuit for our rotate cylinder and also our tilt up and down. And we use a push button to activate the whole sequence, which we'll show you a little bit later now on. I'm here to show you the logic in our program, which is right here on this easy 412DA-RC. As you go to the circuit diagram, you'll notice that our push button's right here. Um, as you hit it, it's counting up on each one of these counters. These counters are in turn setting timers, um, which basically end up running the outputs. Right here, as you can see, are the outputs. Or you got counterclockwise rotation and clockwise rotation. But basically, to get clockwise rotation, you actually need both of these fired because of our solenoid and reversing circuit. As you see here is a tilt up and down. Um, there's P1 and P2 buttons that are actually located on the molar itself. Um, this allows us to home it at the end for easier transport. As you'll see right here, um, our last counter is basically to reset all our other counters um, there, uh, so we can run through the sequence again and it doesn't um, pause and you have to shut it off and turn it back on. This is our CAD drawing of the clay pigeon thrower. As you can see, we have a three plate design with the bottom plate being stationary, the second plate being rotated by an electromechanical cylinder right here. You can see this is welded right up to here. And then we have the top plate where we will mount the clay pigeon thrower. And the bottom plate we also have four wheels to support the whole structure. And then a bearing down here and then also right here to support any side load. And up on the second plate we have another electromechanical cylinder here to tilt it and then two pivots. Okay, so here we'll show you the overall structure and some of the components on a clay pigeon thrower. Here's the three plates, again we can show it. And here are the pivots, the tilt cylinder, and down to the bottom level, we have three wheels instead of four. So we just decided three would be enough support. And then we have PLC. There's bearing in there, cylinder over there to tilt it. And down here, we decided to add braces in between all the legs because we had some problems with the whole bottom plate flexing down. So it wouldn't be enough to support any of the top weight. And here's power source. We have a 12 volt battery. You can use any kind of 12 volt source, like a power supply or a car battery. Show the bottom battery. And here's the push button. <laughs> and the bottom bearing down here to support any side load. We mounted down there. Okay. <laughs> and now we're here to demonstrate how it works. Right now we just have a hand thrower on there which was donated to us by Ben Lebecca. Um, it's really designed for an auto automatic clay thrower. Mm -hmm. um, so basically one of the buttons would be pushing to turn this tilt and the other one just to throw it. So therefore it's fully automated and it'll throw in different patterns for you. And to demonstrate we got Josh Bogart right here. Alright, so all we set the motor program. Each time you hit the button, mm -hmm. it'll fire a counter and switch positions. We have four different positions right now.
And as you can see, as it's doing this, you can throw in different flight patterns, whether you want it to be up high and uh, more uh, leveled out, or if you mount this in another direction, you'll actually yeah. wing the clay out or wing it in. So just by switching up where you, how your clay thrower sits on there, depends on you know which way it's going to throw. So this molar 412 DC PLC, we're only able to have the four positions because we're limited on the logic space. And if we did have another more capable PLC, we could have up to nine positions for the tilt. Special thanks to the Alexandria Mechatronics program.